just uh, just before we grab the next character, his real name is actually Babendum. Babendum? Yep. He's Belgian. Babendum. Ah. Yeah. Yep, my, my, my uh, mom had a when she was a kid, I think. Oh, ah, cool. Well, we do have uh, his only major power that has been listed is he can lift tires. So, uh, not a very big power. Um, and his early odds of survival, now these are just numbers I sort of threw out there, no real scientific fact behind them. I gave him a 15% chance. Uh-huh. Does that sound... Does that sound fair to you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what? Yeah, I guess because anyone who uses fire attacks or you know can break through his body can beat him. Oh yeah. Oh, by the Pretty way, do, uh, would you recap for the other viewers who just walked through the stream? A quick recap, can please. Ah, uh, absolutely. The the uh, the entire tournament. Um, basically, this is the character chaos tournament where thirty random characters from pop culture have been randomly selected to battle each other out. Uh, we are here. I am the Slorg. We've got Lord Comet and Bad Mr. Pumpkin. We'll be discussing who may or may not win uh, in these battles, and eventually, in a single elimination tournament, there will be one victor. Oh, yeah. It may not be who you expect. Uh, it's just for fun. Nothing real serious. And the first... First uh, contender was just selected, and it is the Michelin Man. Yeah. For those of you who are uh, unfamiliar with him, he is Michelin Tire's mascot. He is a big white thing. He looks like the Stay Puft Mar Marshmallow Man gone on acid. He looks exactly like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man on acid. Uh, his only major power is that he can lift tires, and he has about a 15% chance of surviving the tournament. Um, well, well, he's, uh, he's uh, also very durable because he's made of, like, thick rubber. So, yeah. That is true. Um, I did write that the Michelin Man has above average strength due to lifting tires all day, and he has a rubbery body that can absorb impacts and reduce damage, much like the tires he represents. So, uh, he, there's always a chance. We can't underestimate any of these guys. There is a chance. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. Who will the Michelin Man be up against? Random selection says... Hey, no women, no women, no women. Stop! Flash Gordon. Oh, God. Oh, wow. That guy's older no. than we are. No, he's no. older than me. This is a bit interesting. Flash Gordon. Um... This I'm referring to. One. I'm not referring to age. I'm just referring to you know. Oh Lord, how old that how old that is, Factor. He's like yeah, he, he is quite old. Um, uh, though granted, one, one of the rules of the tournament is we use the characters in their most powerful form. Uh, so he will. He won't. He wouldn't be old. He'd be his, his nice young, uh, flashy self. From the '80s no movie. Content. They're, they're actually, the Flash Gordon's been around since the 1930s, I think. Yeah, he has like been 70. around forever. Yeah, it's Let been since the 1930s, yeah. So I'm, well, something like that is right way... Well, well, what do you think George Lucas got the idea for Star, uh, some of that idea for Star Wars? Flash Gordon. That tells you how old it is. That that scrolling crawl they do at the very beginning of the Star Wars movies? From Flash Gordon. That's from the Flash, that's from Flash Gordon. That's not just from those serials. It's from many serials. Series, but yes. Indeed. Now, Flash Gordon, uh, major powers, survivability, and luck. Luck out That's, the yin-yang. That is really all that he's got going for him, but it could be enough. His early odds of survival were set at 50%. Um, as a quick uh, rundown, he was a polo player and a graduate from Yale University when Earth was bombarded by meteors. Through a series of incidents, he ended up on a rocket ship with his girl Dale Arden, as well as Dr. Hans Zarkov. The ship eventually lands on the planet Mongo, and they discover that Ming the Merciless was behind the meteor attack on Earth. Flash had many adventures on Mongo and other exotic locales, always finding trouble and always managing to find a way to come out on top. Yay. Now... Um, weapons. Flash Gordon, I think he had a, uh, he laser had a gun. rifle of some kind. I know he had a yeah. gun. He also yeah, had a crazy I helmet. I don't oh, remember yeah. the helmet. 
Um, but I do remember he had some sort of laser gun or. Yeah, he had a laser gun of some kind because I know he had a I know he had a physical ranged weapon on his person, like a handheld, like a handgun or something like that. I know he had that on his person at all times. Yeah. Did you ever Did you ever see that '80s movie about him? No. Okay, it's got Queen in it that sings the music. Queen can make any movie better. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, um, well, as far as this battle goes, um, I'm going to throw my suggestion out there and say a laser gun that emits heat would obviously melt the Michelin Man. Mm. So I'm going to say that Flash shoots him, and the Michelin Man gets melted, and that's the end of the battle. But uh, what do you what do you think, Comet? Burn. Yep. He is burned. I think that's a. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a unanimous. Michelin Man melted oh, yeah. Flash Gordon into the second round. Okay. <laughs> you, I also you, agree. You, are, you are there any arguments? Are there any? Arguments? I was going to say that it depends on how. First off, how big is the Michelin Man compared to Flash? He is about man-sized, um, a little bit taller than a normal man. Okay, because um, if he shoots it, because I mean, if he a laser pistol only has a small when it hits, it only makes a small burn. So the Michelin Man could potentially run up to him as he's shooting him a lot and just you know whacking with a tire. Yeah, All right, that, that is a point. That uh, that is a good point. However, then we have to think about Flash's own survivability and his luck factor. Yeah, he's gonna be, he's gonna survive when he gets whacked with a tire in the next week. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's one way to burn well, rubber. I mean, seriously. Thing. Does he could... even get hit with the tire? Because he is such a lucky uh, rodent-like individual that uh, he may not even get hit with the tire. He may if he gets lucky, because he can always laser gun him in the nuts. No, he could yeah. shoot him in the eyes. Shoot him because Michelin Man doesn't have any nuts because he's a rubber man. True. Uh, well, okay, he okay. He uses prophylactics. Whatever. <laughs> he has he has huge eyes. So just shoot him in the eyes. <laughs> well, he's just a so, big. Well, he is a big pile of rubber anyway. So that's the reason that joke went. So final decision: Flash Gordon shoots Michelin Man in the eyes, melts his eyes out, kicks him in his non-existent rubber nuts, <laughs> moves on to the next level. <laughs> And the crowd goes wild for that. That's Gordon for the win, folks. The very first. Uh, okay. <laughs> and that was fun. All right, Michelin Man, you have failed. Uh huh. Right. So, so how bad did he fail, though? Well, he's I just blind he now. Like he's just like the Nora, I guess, from uh, Warmworth. He's blind. Okay. Well, then he gets to fail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> I love it. Mitch yeah, sometimes LeMay, you overuse it, though, just to say. You didn't even get to the second round. I'm sorry. Oh, well. Mitch LeMay yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay. Are you guys ready for next uh, the next battle here? Yep. Yes, we are. We have another contender. He is in my hands. Let me see. Yeah. We have... Jubilee from the X Men Marvel uh, comics. Oh That's God, crazy. that whining, that wool whining biatch! Are you kidding me? Her powers are almost well, useless. Have you seen the cartoon? Good Lord, she she's more useless than. Never mind. <coughs> well, let's see. Let's see what I've got. Uh, I've got some info on her. I, 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 Sometimes she had really good powers, though. Like when only so or some once in a while she could use like had like uh, godlike powers, but that's only. Once in a blue moon. Dude, they wrote her into the script because, so they could have a kid in the thing instead of they being so serious. Are you kidding me? That gr that character is more useless than anything. I mean, seriously. She became a vampire right. once, I guess. Sparkly. Yeah, um, that is true. And I was just going to mention that. I actually had a difficult time deciding which version of Jubilee to enter into the tournament because recently she was turned into a vampire. She lost all of her previous powers, and now she has the powers of a vampire. Super speed, Ooh. strength. Uh, but she also has the weaknesses, the typical weaknesses of a vampire, such as holy water and garlic. 
which would make her relatively weak. Yeah. There, because of that, I decided to include the original Jubilee, whose power is included plasma projection and concussive blasts. Yeah, um, yeah but she didn't she, have any proper control either. She did not have proper control, that is true. She has, let's see, plasma powers, limited immunity to telepathy, depending on who she's up against, uh, the ability to explosively charge objects, similar to Gambit. Yeah, but she Gambit was actually cool. The potential, now this is just potential, under very extreme stress, she does have the potential to detonate matter at a subatomic level with the force of a fusion bomb. Yeah, when was the last time we saw that? <laughs> when in the Depends heck in the cartoon did we see that does. happen? Never. Except uh, I don't I don't ever recall her seeing that in the in the X Men cartoon ever that I can recall. And she's in the comics just, too. Well the comics are a different it. story. I'm referring yeah, to what I've comics. seen so far. Yeah, uh, we're using a bit of the comics, a bit of the cartoon, mostly the comics because she was way more powerful in the comics than she was in the cartoon. Uh, Emma Frost once described Jubilee as having unlimited potential and that she was one of the most powerful mutants she had ever met. <laughs> Boy, she got that wrong. But she has virtually no control. Mm -hmm. It's not so, just control. She also has. She also is extremely young and she's stupid because she's only like 13. So, go figure. Not all 13-year-olds are stupid. It's just she is stupid. So... Now, my early odds of survival had her at 55%. Man, you were generous. Flash Gordon, just because she has that ability. She could potentially erase someone like Flash Gordon from existence. Oh, of course, to. if she if she uh, knew how to directly do it, but Flash Gordon will just, you know, I on blast her in the face before she had a chance to do anything, because she yeah. goes, I can't do anything, what do I do? And he goes, okay, sorry, Zorch. I guess it depends how fast her plasma projection is compared to how fast light is. Because if they're both at the speed of light, then who's ever quickest on the draw would win. True. And it also depends on who she's up against. And I have the next contender here in my hands. Let's find out who it is. And uh, they say we Jubilee is an alpha level mutant, is someone is telling me. We have the very next contender, Jim Carrey, folks. Jim Carrey? What? Jim Carrey enters the tournament with a smile on his face. He's my Is favorite he comedic act? actor of all time, and you put him in there? He's going to make people laugh themselves to death. That's about the only thing he can do. Hey, oh, I didn't put does he have a mask? Well, if he's um, okay. no. so. He doesn't have the mask because we're using Jim Carrey. Now, this was specified. Uh, when he was submitted, we're using Jim Carrey, the actor, not he's the dead. characters they acted as. Oh, he's God, yeah, no, 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 he's going to flop hard. He, he'll he make people laugh themselves <laughs> deaf until, until they piss in their pants, and he'll be a great actor, but he ain't got shit in a tournament. Have you seen the clay, claymation fights? Have you seen what they did to that poor man? They made him the biggest laughing stock when he went, went against Mariah Carey. It was absolutely, oh, Lord, it, was, it was abusive. But well, we have uh, we have Jim Carrey's major power to be facial contortion. Yeah. Uh, so he can swallow people uh, whole. <laughs> uh, he's not an anaconda. He does have early odds of survival set at five percent. I uh, yeah, I, I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah. I don't even see him on the list. Well, um, I'm just gonna have to throw my opinion out there, I think Jubilee probably makes him explode, or blinds him, kicks him in the nuts. I think she's a little bit more athletic than he is. Jim Carrey is, is, a, oh, hey, Jim a, Carrey is a phenomenal actor. He is absolutely the best, some of the best I've seen in comedy. But Jesus Christ, if he gets in a tournament, he's not going to get his ass handed to him on a silver plate. He's going to get his ass handed to him, period, by the 13-year-old retard. Go figure out how this is going to play. <laughs> Jubilee, you know, when I, when, I, when I saw Jubilee enter the tournament, I thought to myself, she's going to need some luck to get into the second round, because uh, yep. she doesn't really have full, full power and uh, control over her powers, but Jim Carrey, 
doesn't have any. I'm sorry, Jim Carrey fan, but uh, I don't think he stands a chance no. at all. No. Let's just say that Jim Carrey uh, is blown up from the summertime of level and there's just like a cloud of dust where he, or a cloud <laughs> of black thing where he was. Jim Carrey was the stress level needed by Jubilee to reach her full maximum power, and she turned him into dust. I like it. Yep. Well, that Not is no dust, surprise. Yeah, he he no longer exists on a subatomic level. He is because he, Orange. Yeah, he's and because uh, Jubilee is also a gymnast. Uh, the latest word in. She is. That uh, she is. Jim Carrey, you're funny man, but you're also a dead man. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> really? I wonder how smooth and dead he is. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay. Next contender I have in my hands. Oh wow. Prepare to die. Weird. We have Morpheus. You mean from uh what was that, Matrix? Morpheus from the Matrix enters the tournament. Uh special oh, rules with Morpheus. Now most the, because he exists. His, at his most powerful in the Matrix, normally we don't give any particular character a an, an advantage or a disadvantage. However, we also have to use the character at their most powerful abilities. Therefore, they will be battling as if in the Matrix, whoever he's up against. Well, yeah. Morpheus is just a normal person with that abnormally fast persona. I mean, he was basically while in the Matrix, he could perform some cool stuff, but he ain't no Neo. He is definitely see. not a Neo. Um, let's see if I can get... Here we go. We've got his uh, I don't powers. see him on a, a list anyway. Major powers, limited reality manipulation. As I said, uh, Neo manipulated the mother flipper. Of course, they were very generous with Keanu Reeves' character, but they allow Keanu to fly in the flipping Matrix. Morpheus, dad, no such luck. Morpheus, uh, early odds of survival set at 65%. Um, well, he's also a martial arts expert, too, so that, that's also in his corner. Yeah, we, we need to go with, um, because limited, you know, the, the whole idea of limited reality manipulation could leave things completely open. Like, say, he could do almost anything. However, we're going with stuff that we have seen him do. He performs so, a pretty cool feat list here. He has completely mastered most martial arts. Yep. We don't know if he knows them all. He has mastered any kind of weapon, most vehicles, and let's see, he can bend the laws of science to a limited degree to achieve higher jumps, stronger punches and kicks, run up walls, and other feats that are otherwise impossible. Wow. He is second only to Neo in terms of understanding how to manipulate the Matrix. And the agents. And the uh, the agents yeah. don't really count because they're because they're computer programs. Because they're just yeah. computer programs. Morpheus, very strong contender. Uh, I feel sorry for whoever he's up against. <laughs> yeah, really. And and I have uh, I have the next contender in my hands. Let's have a look. <laughs> the green hornet. <laughs> Excellent. I, okay, I have a feeling I know who's going to win this one. Uh, Maxi from the uh, oh, what the heck's it called? Sure, the, I sure uh, call Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur, yes. Maxi from Soul Calibur. Are you joking? No, I don't know. Uh, I think he could... I think Maxi could win. Poor Maxi. Um, well, let me let me just go over what Maxi can and cannot do. <laughs> and uh, this will probably be a very fast battle, but... Mm, you never know. Uh, not necessarily. Let's and see what he's got going for. He is from the Middle Ages. Wait, he is a computer he game, is. so that means... He's gonna do whatever he wants. <laughs> um, major major powers for for Maxi: skilled with nunchucks, and he he apparently knows Jeet Kune Do. Uh, early odds of survival: sixty percent. Yep. I'm going to lower those odds a bit. Yeah, well, Jeet Kune Do is the uh, is the Bruce Lee martial art. It's basically uh, run with it. <laughs> Pretty much. And Bruce Lee um, is still one of the best martial arts in the known world. Period. Even though he's dead, he's still the best. Special rule for Maxi because once again we have to use these characters in their most formidable fo form. He is in possession of Soul Edge. 
Okay. Does that wait, even uh, make a difference with somebody as powerful as Morpheus? Not really. Yes. Wait, because Maxi is. I, I don't know if you want to use this, but Maxi is also a. He's just a computer program character. So is well, that we'll, be, we'll be treating him as an actual. As the person that he is representing in the. Yeah, he gets because yeah, because otherwise we could say, oh, a cartoon is just a drawing. So, uh, well, it's a good thing it's not Mr. Rudy, Mr. Rudy, because he can beat he can beat guns. <laughs> uh, now, w now I, I'm I'm pretty sure Morpheus is gonna wipe the floor with Maxie, but Soul Edge. We have to discuss Soul Edge because Maxie is in possession of it. Uh, Soul Edge was once a normal sword until it was used to kill opponents over many many years, and it became cursed, a cursed sentient sword. The sword is capable of driving its wielder insane, can shapeshift into any weapon type the wielder can use, can steal the souls of opponents it wounds, and on top of this, the sword compels anyone nearby to try to obtain it and drain the life of its wielder and its en his enemy alike. Yep. Interesting. Uh, would yeah. Morpheus go for Soul Edge? Uh, he'd probably try to grab it, but it would probably just... Would it, would it work inside of the Matrix? That's would the thing. Would now, now Soul Edge compels the opponents to really, really, really want the sword. However, is Morpheus's self training in the Matrix enough to make him realize that Soul Edge doesn't actually exist? Would he be able to resist? Probably not. But no, I mean, not not really, because he's he's human. He'll brain his brain will go into a pan and go. Pfft. So yeah. now. Okay, so I, I can agree with that. Morpheus loses his composure, wants to go after Soul Edge. Now, here's the hard part. Does it even matter? Maxi uh, has Soul Edge. If it wounds Morpheus, there is a chance that it could drain the life out of Morpheus. However, Morpheus has the ability to bend reality on his side. He can jump higher, kick faster. He he could completely avoid any swing that Maxi could use, assuming he's using the nunchuck form of Soul Edge. Mm, would Max would Maxi have a chance of scoring that small blow that could uh that could uh turn the tides? Definitely, because Soul Edge also increases its user's power. So and, and speed. So Maxi can do like superhuman things probably just as good as Morpheus or better because that's what it does with the that's what the solids can do. All right, do you agree? I agree as well. That that as, that that actually makes a lot of sense. I think we're going to have quite possibly our first uh, upset in the tournament. Morpheus taken down by Maxi using Soul Edge? Maybe. Definitely. If he well, man if he man in this tournament, I am so gotta, gonna scream. We've gotta definitely, we've gotta maybe just for the sake of the fun of this tournament, I'm going to say Maxi wins. Oh Maxie really? Takes out Morpheus. Unbelievable. And now he's, he's stuck in the matrix. <laughs> and now he's stuck in the matrix forever. Maxi, you won, but in the end you failed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Morpheus, Morpheus taken down by Maxi, a soul, soul caliber, <laughs> unbelievable. Our first upset of the night, very well uh, argued, very well played. We have a new contender. Uh huh. Oh my really? Who and who is it? We have, we have a very big powerhouse. In Himura Kenshin from Rurouni Kenshin and Samurai X. He will rip the crap out of people. Are you kidding me? He uses an upside down Kosai, sword. The Manslayer. That dude was so badass that uh, he carried an upside down weapon for the whole flipping series. He didn't need a sharp sword anymore. It wasn't upside down. It was just that the blade was reversed. I thought it was an upside. They call it an upside down sword in one of their uh, oh. one of the episodes. No reverse blade weapon. That's what they call it. Yeah. No, no, they call the no, no. Sword. What he said was the sword was upside down. So I believe that's what Peter, I went by. Remember the tsunami when Peter Cullen did the uh, uh, thing for it? Peter Cullen did it awesomely. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let me go through his uh, powers real quick. There are a lot. 
Super uh, major powers: master swordsman, superhuman speed, strength, and fighting ability. Early odds of survival: seventy percent. Yeah. Uh, also, he has a sword see. that can cut through anything. But this is a, a this is a bit of a long one, but I'm going to try to rush through it. Uh, years of training and battle have turned Kenshin into a killing machine. His mastery of the Hiten Mitsurugi sword style is unparalleled. In addition to his swordsmanship, Kenshin possesses superhuman speed. In fact, the Ryumi Kenshin manga describes his speed and reflexes as being godlike. This is demonstrated many times, such as when he was able to disable seven town guards before several even had time to draw their swords. He has also been shown to possess the ability to dodge bullets fired from a Gatling gun and can move faster than the human eye can perceive. He is able to swing his sword so fast that it creates a vacuum and forces his opponent closer and sets up a final attack known as the Amakakaru Ryu no Himaraki. This final attack is performed at speeds described as even faster than the gods and renders its victim unable to move when performed using a reverse blade sword, the sword Kenshin chooses to wield after his days as an assassin. The move is also described as being able to be performed at any time in such a way that Kenshin is never off guard. Kenshin has even bested an opponent who could move at the speed of a god known as Seita Sojuro. This opponent moved so fast that Kenshin could not see his movements and was only able to tell by the subtle movements of the floor beneath him as to where Seita was at any given time. Despite the obvious disadvantage, Kenshin's agility, reflexes, and battle instinct were enough to defeat this opponent. Kenshin is not without weaknesses, however. Even with his speed, ag agility, strength, reflexes, and battle instincts, he is still only human. Each powerful move he performs takes a toll on his body, though he does possess amazing constitution and can withstand blows that would fell ordinary humans. He also occasionally needs enough time to study his opponent before he can defeat them. This means he has to fight longer battles and risk injuries piling up and weakening him. Against truly epic p opponents, the injuries could add up. Mm -hmm. Agree? One 80. thing I have to say is that he is not superhumanly strong. I, it's shown many times that the only thing he has... I mean, he's really fast and everything, but he's not really that strong. Uh, remember True. that fight with that one guy in the bandages? What was his name? Uh, uh, I, for, I forget his name. Yeah, I know, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, who used the, the, the fat of his opponents. If, if, he didn't, if he wasn't burned or anything, that guy would have killed Tension. Because the only reason he lost was because he overheated and then he burned up. But otherwise, he would have killed Tension easy. Yeah, I think uh, he, he would have been able to. Um, I think the whole superhuman strength thing is a bit misleading. He's, he doesn't quite have superhuman strength, but he does know how to use his agility and reflexes to make it seem like he's a lot stronger than he is. Yes. Such as, uh, I mean, the, the basics of most martial arts are to use your opponent's movements against them, so to speak. Um, he can easily take down a lot stronger opponent, making it seem like he's stronger than he actually is. Still, fairly powerful uh, entrant into the tournament. Very, very good. My money is on her own intention so far. It's the well, by Pulsai. Uh, let's have a look at who he's up against. Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Almost as good, we have Scarlett O'Hara. Oh, she's away. dead. She <laughs> is! So <laughs> forget you! She deserves to die. She, she deserves to die. I hate Sin that. Thing. Sincerely, my dear, right. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Scarlett That's O'Hara's dead. That's about what we really need to say about that one. Um, her only real power? Seduction. She couldn't, sedu she couldn't seduce away out of a wet paper bag, much less anything yeah. else. Are you kidding me? Thank Clark you. Gable was wait, 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 wait. twisted at that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The entire uh, Gone with the Wind is about her sleeping around with about, what, four or five different guys and having multiple children. Yeah, well, uh, she, die, if she I'll wants die. a man, she can get them. Uh, yeah, but even described but as... Uh, even described as not being beautiful, she just has a way with men. Apparently, uh, they just they just want to sleep with her. Yeah, well, you know, uh, back then, anything around. with a nice pair of tits that doesn't have gun areas, you <laughs> know, a, a very attractive woman. You get what I said? <laughs> I don't give a damn. Frankly, we don't give a damn. Um, That's what I just tension, said. I think his swordsman spirit's going to be enough that he wouldn't care what she's trying to do to him. That, g that guy will go, he'll look at her straight and say, you want something? Yeah, come over here, Daddy. And he's gonna go. Yeah, whatever, bitch. <laughs> Sit. He's, he's gonna cut her like twelve now, times. Uh, 
The one other thing I can say about Scarlett O'Hara, um, she is going to die, but uh, she apparently was quite a dead eye aim with a pistol because uh, she did shoot a Yankee soldier in the nose with one single shot, killing him. Uh, However, against Kenshin, it doesn't matter. He can dodge bullets. He'll get to her before she even draws. Cut the gun in half. Yeah, cut the gun in half. Scarlett O'Hara. Cut in half. Kenshin gets over his... Uh, Wanting to save people, he killed her. Uh huh, he did. He killed her quite, quite dead. <laughs> I think she didn't even get a chance to scream. She just kind of looked and then she fell apart. She, yeah. Kind of like the relationships. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But we, have, we have a powerhouse as the next uh, contender Bambi. Bam was it Mecha Bambi or just Bambi? Um, this is normal Bambi. However, uh, again, because we have to use the most powerful version of the character, it is adult Bambi. Oh uh, god! After, after he killed the wolves. Um, now this is a point I wanted to make. Unlike most Disney characters, Bambi has killed before, and he will do it again if he has to. Yep. Well, didn't he kill dogs, not wolves? No, he killed um, wolves. Dogs or wolves. I think they were wolves. But no, they they're wolves in the movie. Like Trust, they're the wolves that are attacking Feline, dude. Trust me, I know about that. Because I said my <laughs> nieces love the Bambi movie, and I got sort of roped into watching it quite a few times. It was wolves. Bambi. Um, let me have a look. I oh, know I do have hunting dogs written down, but that's going by Wikipedia, so uh, who knows? Could have wolves the than the dogs. Either way, he killed them. Yep. Yeah, well, Bambi, yeah, a good antler, dude. Uh, he does. Let, now let's let's have a look. Major powers: antlers and hooves. Uh, early odds of survival: five percent. He also uh, baby eyes. Looks, he does possess higher intelligence than an ordinary deer. Is not afraid to use his razor sharp antlers. Uh, he he ended up going up against what's his name, uh, Rano, a uh, another buck who was after his girl and uh, knocked Rano. I think he knocked him off a cliff or something. I can't remember. Yeah, he did. Uh, he has strong hind legs, allows him to leap great distances, and his speed is much greater than an ordinary human's. So, uh, he, he does have a, a little bit of a chance. Yeah, and the thing it is, is he had greater speed than a human, and all he hears, boom! And at the bear went, eh! Thud! And, that, and then I said, is that the end of the movie? Hot damn, they shot him! And I'm like, rats, he got up. I was like, what kind of shot is that? <laughs> He's immortal. Oh my goodness! I was hoping it was people, people uh, around there, Thumper's gonna go. We're gonna rejoice! We got deer jerky! Woo! We have his, uh, <laughs> we have his opponent. We have entering into the uh, character cast tournament, Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh God! Scrooge wins. Scrooge wins. Scrooge wins, hands down. Now wait! Oh, hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Ebenezer Scrooge. Wait. His, uh, his major power. I don't know, cruel. he's a banker. He's a banker. I mean, a banker couldn't really be a deer. Yeah, well, a banker could hire a... jokers to kill the deer. I mean, seriously. Well, he's well, his be, only, he's his gonna... only major power... Now, we're not allowed to use outside help. So oh, okay. He's on his own. He'll he annoy it to death. To do it. Um, let's see. No, Ebenezer dies, I'm afraid. I like him, but he dies. Yep. Because... I mean, he's like walking down the street, a deer runs him in from behind, he's dead. Yep. Good antler, dude. I Good antler. Agree. Scrooge could not possibly move fast enough to avoid a uh, charging deer. So, uh, yeah. I think Bambi uh, Bambi gets another kill. Bambi kills again. Scrooge. Bleeds you must out stop this deer. Well, when was Scrooge most powerful when he was younger, right? I mean, so, I mean, even then, he'd still be dead, I guess. He never says well, anything about him. Yeah, you'd only hit, you'd only be able to use a younger Scrooge if he appeared uh, as a younger individual. And, uh, Which he did. He does. He part. does kind of. Well, when he goes back to his past, he does, but not any time in the future. Was he as cruel then as he is now? No, he was stupid no. as he is now. I like the ghost. Yeah. Of I think we should use like the ghost of Christmas uh, uh, future because no one can beat that. <laughs> You can use that. Submit it to uh, submit it to the slurg.com. See if uh, we can use it. Boy, if Ebenezer Scrooge can't win, maybe maybe the uh, the ghost of Christmas past or future will uh, come back and try to avenge him. 
Oh, he's deaf. Wait, he can't be deaf. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> Bambi wins. Bambi yeah. somehow made it to the second round. Um. Oh, we have a we have a, a fan favorite here. Mr. Magoo. Yay! Oh, Lord. Enters the tournament. He's oh, really God. Now, Mr. Magoo has an uncanny ability to survive. And he has, yeah. as far as I know, I've, I've watched as many Magoo cartoons as I could researching this. I have never seen Magoo take any kind of injury. Despite <laughs> multiple uh, life and death situations. So, uh, that... That could go in his favor. I think his uh, odds of survival should be 70% because he's just so lucky. They should. Uh, I did have them at 5%, but they, they, yeah. who knows? Fearlessness and luck. He also doesn't have any fear because he can't see what's in front of him. Yeah, it's because he never opens his eyes. He's blind. He's, he's darn near blind, so uh, it doesn't matter who he's up against. He'll treat him the same. Uh, let's see who he's going up against. The blob. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Actually, uh, we have Panthro. Panthro will oh. kick his ass from here to eternity. Panthro is voiced uh, one of my favorite voice actors, and he has a pair of cool Thundercatian nunchucks. He is a badass mofo. End of story. Magoo is... Uh... Paste. Good? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Magoo turns to goo? Yep. Um, Wait, I have a, I have a, I have something to say. Panto is a good guy, though. He wouldn't just immediately kill. I didn't say uh, kill him. I said beat his ass. Uh, I said nothing about killing. Uh, wait, we do, we do have, uh, we did have Kenshin uh, breaking his oath not to kill, and he killed in the last round. Uh, this is, this is life or death. They yep. either kill their opponent or they die themselves. Uh huh. Okay, so no, Panto would strangle him, going. I guess like, Mr. Magoo. The only thing that could save Mr. Magoo is if like a, a mountain falls on top of him, Panto. Uh, not happening. So Mr. Magoo has had his he is brained and probably eaten by Panto. Yeah, well, the thing it is, I, is <laughs> Panto would stomp him through the wall, dude. He's a master martial artist. His uh, his voice actor is also top notch. He's dead, but he's still he was still top notch at the time. End of story. I, I think it may go this way because Magoo has his ridiculous luck. I think uh, Panthro would be attacking him, attacking him, attacking him, not hitting him, crazy things happening, somehow Magoo is surviving. However, Panthro is in much better physical shape than Magoo, and Magoo would eventually tire out. Doesn't matter how lucky you are if you can't move. Okay? He's an old man. I don't think he would last so long that he'd be able to just you know pull a victory out Panthro of Panthro lifted feet. the freaking thunder tank. That says it all. Well, of course, like built the thunder tank. Panthro wins. He built the thunder tank. No, he <laughs> lifted the thunder tank, and I even can prove it in the episode. Okay. Mr. Magoo is really the emperor. He can shock him. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I I hate to say this, but I think Magoo is uh Magoo is gone. He's Magon. Magoo is Magon. Sorry, As I Magoo. Said. Panthro makes it to the second round. All right, I'm gonna pick up the pace here a little bit because uh, I'm running running short on time here. I gotta pick up my son here in a bit. Uh, next entrance, the the Green Arrow. Ooh, the Green Arrow. Now Ollie is actually pretty cool. Um, he's actually a green rich kid. He's actually a rich guy oh. who uh, decided to go. I'll be a hero now and become an expert archer. Now I know all about Ollie. He's he's a he's a he's just a human, but he has um he has a, a variety of case of arrows. He's good in martial arts, um, and he's a he's a really good archer as well. That that matches what uh what I've got here. I've got expert marksman as well as his trick arrows. Early odds of survival were fifty percent. Um, he possesses no superpowers, but is one of the best marksmen in the DC universe, and may actually be the best. One of the best. Uh, uh, he's challenging uh, no, Hawkeye. Oh, there is it. one who's better. It's he's called Bullseye, but that's just because he has Bullseye has Bullseye can hit any target, no matter what. It's debatable. It. No, no. As far as the hero side, if you want Ollie, if you want precision shots, you talk to Ollie, hands down. Ollie is really good. Now, uh, Green Arrow. He has quite a few different uh, trick arrows. He's got net arrows tr to trap opponents, explosive arrows, shock arrows, Boxing freeze arrows. arrows, 
He has all kinds. The thing it is, is he can effectively he, considering he the um, archer like uh, an archer like ba a Batman archer is what I call Ollie for the most part because he has all kinds of stuff in his arrow bag. He just pulls it out. There's like there it is, doop, and it's like he has like the bat belt or the you know the utility belt, but it's actually a utility arrow, uh, a utility quiver. So that's yeah. how I build it. I do have to point this out. He has used a kryptonite arrow against Superman, which is fun. But he's never oh, used yeah. an actual arrow against. DC and uh, anyway. someone pointed out something very <laughs> he's interesting. He's never killed anyone with a real arrow. Bullseye is Marvel, has. not DC. Yeah. So that does. So unless Bullseye is the opponent, I think Ollie's got it. As far as the uh, personal shot. Yes, I actually, uh, he does. He actually does have a Cupid arrow. He got a hold of Black Canary. There you she, go. She's a woman who can scream at him. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have his opponent. I feel sorry for his opponent. We have Sawyer from Lost. Oh God, he's I, raped. So I don't even know Sawyer, but I guess he's dead because he's only he's a he like, like a human. Uh, the now, Lost Sawyer. series was horrible, as far as I'm concerned. So he's dead. I'll, I'll mention I'll mention Sawyer. Uh, he's a master con man. That's one of his powers and skilled marksman. Notice I just said skilled. Uh, he did take out a polar bear with a single shot of a uh, pistol. A pistol? However, wow. Uh, yes, he, he had a pistol. So he does have a, a gun versus versus arrows. He has a lot of guns, actually. He, uh, For those who haven't seen Lost, he was the guy who, after the crash of the uh, airliner, he went and rounded up all the guns. And uh, people had to come to him in order to get guns, and he uh, traded them for favors. Not going to say what kind of favors, but... Anyways, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a good marksman. He does have a gun. Uh, I don't know if it's going to do him much good against Green Arrow, though. Green Arrow will stop him because you're just like, okay, net arrow, boop, or uh, explosive arrow, boop, he wins. I yeah, mean, I seriously. Explosion. A little more. Think it is. The, uh, well, Ollie would. Shot. Ollie always seems to know where, where, which arrow is wi in which place. He just goes, okay, which one I want to use? This one. Boop, you're dead. I'm gonna say a mustard gas arrow. He shoots at him. Yeah, I think he just picks a random arrow out of his uh, thing and just throws it, turns around, ignores the black hole arrow. arrow. <laughs> Yeah, well, well like, get around. Like, you gotta realize that Ollie's used to dealing with with, with with a screamer all day, so you know this little piss ant is gonna be nothing to nothing new to him. In fact, he's gonna laugh at him. No, have I? We may all be agreed that uh, Green Arrow toasts him. Yeah. Sawyer, you didn't really understand what chance. <laughs> is the smoke monster? Is that like in Lost? Is that actually like? You ever have to see that thing? Is it just like a cloud of smoke, or is that just like a yeah, human? Yeah. What does yeah, it do? Uh, smoke, smoke monster was actually some uh, someone real. It um, put him in the next tournament. Suggest him. I'm not, Suggest him for I don't know anything about it. Interesting. I'll, I'll do. I'll do the research for you. It's okay. Uh, um, I don't know. Yeah. So I did. Sorry. Guys. Also, uh, someone has stated that uh, Green Arrow was once a lantern. He was he was a black lantern. Uh, well, which is very point, interesting. So most my, my view is the lanterns. Uh, mo most of them are a lot of them are human, and they're just they're powered by the ring, such as John Stewart, so on and so forth. John Travolta. Yep. So um, I I was pondering whether to include Black Lantern, um, uh, Green Arrow. As nah. the uh, as the entrant, however, I thought uh, I think he's actually well. He he was defeated as as the Black Lantern. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. as the Black Lantern, he's under the control of of Necron or Necros. Yeah. Whatever so that. so with uh, with normal Green Arrow, I think he has more of a chance of uh, thinking for himself and and using that to his advantage than as a uh, Black Lantern. Yeah. So. Moving on to the next, uh, oh, here we have another good one. Vash the Stampede. You mean from, like from uh, a... Trigun. Oh, God. I hear some typing. <laughs> you're not, I'm not typing a bit. Uh, if you're going to type, typing. mute uh, mute your microphone. Okay. Vash the Stampede, um, yeah, major powers. A, He's giant basically giant. an alien. He's basically an alien. He's not really human. 
Uh, he has something called the Angel Arm. And he also has superhuman abilities. Early odds of survival match Kenshin's early odds at 70%. Uh, I'll run through this really quick. As a plant, Vash possesses an angel arm, basically a way to morph his arm into a weapon of immense destructive power. As a pacifist, however, his angel arm doesn't actually harm organic material. He can, however, obliterate everything else in his path, so hiding isn't exactly an option. In addition to this, he has superhuman levels of strength, agility, reflexes, eyesight, and has complete muscle control. Uh, similar, if you ever watched uh, Heroes, you can sort of... Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna even going to try to describe that. Uh, let's put it this way. He can dodge a bullet at extremely close range and can dodge virtually any melee attack. He has been known to show... or he has been shown to be able to redirect the path of fired bullets simply by throwing rocks into their paths. He also possesses higher intelligence than most, if not all, humans, and can usually tell what someone is about to do. He does have limited telepathy as well, though he only really used that with his brother in the series, as far as I can uh, remember. He's also ageless, I think. Uh, yeah, he he's virtually ageless. Um, yeah, so quite powerful. He is a pacifist, though. That's the problem, but in this tournament, pacifism won't do. He's going to have to... Uh, Get over it if he's going to win. Um, Ash the Stampede. Quite a powerful contender. Let's see who he's up against. Well, that okay. armor doesn't really matter. We have Liu Kang. Mortal Kombat. Liu Kang's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Liu Kang, I don't even need to really mention his powers, but he, he can throw fireballs. He can turn into a dragon. Uh, and he's pretty, pretty ripped, pretty built. You know, he's, he's good at martial arts. Yeah, he has that bicycle kick, kick bicycle thing, ba bicycle kick thing too. Yeah, well, he can also he's, drop a Mortal Kombat arcade game on you. He can. However, Vash, uh, much faster, Vash much him. stronger. He has guns. <laughs> Vash kills him. Vash kills him with that with the angel arm. He kills him. That Bang. wasn't even a challenge. Uh, Liu Kang. Fatality. Fatality, very good. <laughs> Bash the stampede. I think it's easy win for Bash. I thought that was I thought that was fitting. I think it's more like um, <laughs> very fitting. Luke Kane was also on. based on Bruce Lee, which is kind of funny. Yeah, that he is. Uh, too bad he's cool. dead. <laughs> yep. Both <laughs> characters are. Bruce Lee, uh, Luke Kane dead. Next battle we have Beowulf. Yes. Now. This is not the Liam Neeson, uh, I think it was Liam Neeson who played Beowulf in the re most recent uh, sort of animated film. Yeah. Yeah. This is the hardcore Beowulf from the, uh, from the original poem. Old English. Yeah, Old English. Um, first Beowulf. First, first I'm sorry. We have Major power, superhuman strength, and wields a magical sword. Early odds of survival were set at 50%. Um, his best asset is his strength. The ability to rip something's arm off with your bare hands like he did to Grendel is enough to suggest amazing strength. But using the sword of a giant, which no other man could lift, and then using so much force as to snap the best sword in the world in half on a dragon's face is enough to truly put Beowulf into the super strength category. Uh, as we must use Beowulf in his most powerful form, he will be competing the Character Chaos Tournament with Nagling Intact. Uh, Nagling being the aforementioned best sword in the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He's pretty strong. Uh, he, he ripped Grendel's... Now, for those unfamiliar with the, uh, of the epic poem, Grendel was a creature who could not be injured by an ordinary weapon. Um, any any sword slash anything spears nothing it it all just uh, bounced off him his his skin was too powerful so uh, Beowulf said well screw you I'm gonna rip off your arm and watch you bleed to death and that's what he did so that was kind of cool mm -hmm. then he went and he killed uh, Grendel's mom because she uh, she was kind of uh, not happy that her son Grendel died. So she drug him into an underwater cave, and she couldn't uh, breach his armor, because 
he wears armor. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't really uh, do anything against her either until he found the sort of a giant, which, as I mentioned, no ordinary person would be able to lift it. He picks it up with one hand and decapitates her. Pretty cool. And in his last uh, famous battle, he went up against a dragon using Nagling. Um, I, I'm guessing that I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know. Known as the best sword in the world, he strikes the dragon with so much force that the sword snaps in half. Despite this, Beowulf still emerges victorious, though he did later die from the wounds suffered by the dragon. Yeah, basically, okay. basically Beowulf is the archetypal Western hero. He's pretty basically. buff. Uh, he, he's... It, it's borderline saying that he's got superpowers. He does have absolutely... I mean, he's obviously got superhuman strength. That's about it. And he does have a pretty wicked sword. So, uh, would that be enough? Let's find out. Who's he up against? Oh, game over. We have the blob. Ah! The, uh, we're not talking about the Marvel Comics blob. We're talking about the blob. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, Blob's superpower. The Blob's superpower is. Hold on, let me let me get to it. He's amorphous. Complete invulnerability to everything except cold. What about heat? Uh, and even way? cold. Well, even cold. Well, we haven't uh, we haven't actually seen heat as a as a uh, weakness of the Blob. The only thing we've seen is cold. Even then, after the Blob was uh, supposedly destroyed in the movie, because uh, in, the, in the movie the Blob, he was frozen and then dropped into the Arctic Ocean, I believe it was. In the end, there was a question mark. Um, as the, uh, the end thing popped up, it said, the end, and then there was a question mark. So that left the possibility open that, as you, as you would think with any sort of liquid object, if it's frozen it could still thaw out. So, the blob might not have even died. It might still be alive. It's sort of left up in the air. <laughs> now, uh, major powers, devouring organic material, immune to everything but cold. Early odds of survival were set at 65%. Um, he eats mm. everything that goes in his way. The sword might survive, but I don't. I don't know if Beowulf. I mean, super strength's not going to do anything against a blob that can eat you. No. Wait. Why does he eat though? Is he just mad, or is it just a, a blob that eats things? It's just a blob. It it moves. It moves very slowly, but it gets bigger as it eats. Uh, and that's another thing that that's sort of interesting about the blob, because if the blob survives this battle. He will be even stronger in the next round because he just he would have eaten Beowulf and he would have gotten bigger. Mm, I don't know. Just Beowulf. want to throw that out there. I'm going to say that pretty strong. How could he? How? I mean, other than, I mean, it's not like he's so strong that he could blow on the blob and freeze him with his breath. Superman would be able to. Yeah. But uh, Beowulf, I don't see him. How big is the blob when they start? That. Wait, how big is the blob when they uh, start? Roughly, roughly man-sized. Um, well, I guess the Beowulf could just outrun him and try to, fr- like, make him go oh, into the, the Arctic. Eventually, someone has to die. And, and as with the rules, we can't put either char- uh, uh, character at a disadvantage. So if, if the setting was the Arctic, the blob would be at an obvious disadvantage. Right, but... But someone also states, uh, uh, she states that essentially Beowulf is pretty smart. So the possibility of luring into the blob of the frozen waste is also uh, a big possibility. Possible. However, the blob has been shown to recoil from cold. So as I, I believe that as the blob got closer to the Arctic, it would just recoil and step back. Then it's a matter of because one of them has to die, it would be a matter of the blob just waiting and surviving until Beowulf grows old and dies. Well, that's my... Uh, what about that's Beowulf? My, anyway. Could Beowulf just... Because I'm pretty sure that if the blob can be frozen, he can be burned or evaporated. Could Beowulf just, like, I don't know, heat up his sword and, and kill the blob that way? Like, like heat up his sword? Well, the sword... 
His sword was described as being magical and being the best sword in existence. However, it never actually showed any any uh, properties of, of heat or, or ice or anything like that. It was just the most, basically the most well-made sword ever. Yeah, I guess the Sharp, best, well, sharpest, at, best weight, you know, that sort of stuff. I, I meant that Beowulf actually like gets a fire and heats up the sword and then hits the blob with that. Would that be possible? Um, I think yeah, I think it might. You, you you do have a point. He could injure the blob. I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the if blob he was able to do that. He could injure it, but would it be enough? I mean, he'd have to stand there, and eventually, I mean, in the end of the uh, of the blob movie, like as he's now, granted, he was pretty big at that time, but he uh, sort of reached up. It, it moves pretty quick. If if there's something nearby, it can move quick enough to sort of lurch out and grab them. And once and they're grabbed, him, that's it. If he hit him with the sword, it would grab the sword and then wrap around his arms and then... Yeah, I think they will stand. It's deba- It's kind of debatable, but I, I, right now, the way I see it, we're, we're trying to find a way to see how Beowulf could possibly beat the blob. And once we reach that level, it's pretty clear who's going to win unless Beowulf was to pull something out of his rear. Because right now we're saying, well, yeah. how could Beowulf possibly win? Well, we, we see see who's the stronger <laughs> at the moment. Where else do you think all the best plans come out of? Thanks. <laughs> no idea, man. The uh, I I just don't see. Well, Beowulf let's see. Off. Let's watch He's Beowulf bend director. over and pull it out of the usual place. Yeah. What do we say? Uh, does the blob, Beowulf blob kills him. manage to... The blob kills him either by attrition or he just outright engulfs him. Yeah, once he gets close enough. I mean, uh... Don't! Yeah. I liked Beowulf. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do like Beowulf, but I think the blob, uh... The blob is his match. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Beowulf. The blob is victorious. Um... Now at this stage, I'm going to have to ask to put a pause to the tournament because I gotta go uh, grab my son from school. Uh, yep. If you guys are up for it, uh, when I get back, I should be back in about a half hour. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Boss. Also, this is also being recorded on my um, detail over here, so I'll actually have this posted up on YT in here in just a little bit. It's just the audio part, so um, so if you wish to come back and continue it, I'll put a, I can also put up as a part two. Very cool. Uh, sounds sounds like a plan. If you guys are both up for it, are, are you okay with that, Pumpkin? I am I, pumpkin about it. <laughs> I know it's getting kind of late uh, over there, so I don't want to keep you guys up too late. But uh, uh, No, dude, I live on my own, so no, I, I, I can stay up late if I want. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll get going now. I, I actually should be out the door right now, and uh, I'll be back. Roughly. Anyway, we'll see you in a little bit, Mr. Slorik. I'll continue my stream running, and we'll have some other fun. All right. Come back. Hey, I'll see you. It was a pleasure around. talking to you, as always. Uh, look forward to doing more. Cool. Uh, um, I'll, I'll remain in the call. I'm just going to mute myself for now. All right? Okay, well, okay, well, I'll stop the thing, and we'll see how it sounds. This is Lord Covet, right, Lord Covet and the Slorik, and Bad Mr. Puppet saying, have a good night, all, and God bless. <laughs>